Morning all. I had an interesting game last night. Uh, we were playing the league leaders, Watford. Um, and um, I was playing Mike Boyce. A couple of their uh, strongest players were away. I think Chris Duncan and um, Andrew Stone. So we had a good chance. We had uh, quite a good team. But we didn't have John Piggott on board one. We had, still had quite a good team. Genghis Hasman on one. Alex two. Uh, Roy on four. I was on board three. And Dave Hotham on, on five. So unfortunately we ended up drawing the match. Anyway, this was... But um, this, this was... One of the uh, the decisive games. I don't want to give away the game result. So Mike Boyce last year. There's a video on YouTube for last year's game, which I was black last year, and that was a draw. So what was going to be the result this time? We we're playing the longer game. You get an option at the start of the game. Do you want to play uh, the shorter, or sort of all game, all the moves <laughs> on the night, or do you want to play a German adjudication? And um, you can't do anything if the opponent does want a German adjudication. That's like uh, the default. And he did. So at move 35, uh, if we reached like 10, 15, it would have been um, German or adjudication. So anyway, I played e4. And I don't know, maybe he was a little bit surprised. Maybe he was expecting d4 or c4 or something. But so I played both, you know, to... Uh, get people off the sense of preparing for me. Hopefully, it's a waste of time preparing for me um, if they do guess board order. So he played the Sicilian, and I thought, um, given I had quite a fun game last time with knight c3, and I do play it a lot in uh, two minute chess. I play knight c3, and um, before starting doing this video, I looked up David Rumans because I some people said he played. Um, Knight c3 with the idea of bishop c4 as opposed to bishop b5 later after f4. Now, from the evidence on chessgames.com, actually, it seems a common plan uh, that he adopted with great success. He even beat the young Joel Benjamin, who, who's a grandmaster, uh, when, when Benjamin was in the UK. He actually uh, had lots of games on chessgames.com, if you want to look him up there, on his uh, personal opening explorer. With um, actually bishop b5 uh, later, and bishop takes c6, often with queen e2 tying down another knight. And after kind of this, you know, he, he often has queen a6s, so and and also um, knight a4 to b6s. There's common tactics, common tactical uh, strategic patterns. I've just checked about five or six of his games. So he wasn't averse to playing uh, bishop b5 if position. Uh, kind of justified it more. If um, Black was playing for the quick, you know, d5, he wasn't just playing bishop c4, and that that was clear anyway. <clears throat> the other thing is, I, f um, I think his highest fide title was fide master, but um, he was like a Grand Prix champion in a couple of years, and that's how it sort of came known as the Grand Prix attack system, the system with knight c3 and f4. Okay, so I played f4 here, g6, knight f3. So bishop g7. Now, of course, we've looked at bishop b5, and there was that, you know, very great fun game, which uh, one of Mike's fellow teammates, Eddie Holland, got crushed in about 20 moves. So we've seen that recently on this channel. Um, but, you know, I haven't really actually played this line. Um, in overboard, the bishop b b five knight d four. I haven't uh, actually done this, and I'm sure I, sh I should at some point. But I I didn't in this game. I stuck with um, my idea, uh, which well, I was attracted with this Andrew Martin video to play uh, bishop c four, with the idea of a three and just tucking the bishop here. Okay, so I played this after e six. Yep, I tucked tucked the bishop on a two, and okay, it's a sort of simplified way of playing against the Sicilian defence, steering away from open Sicilians. Uh, but there's something quite attractive about it, the simplicity. Um, and I know in the French defence, you know, if you if you get like F five, you know, if you provoke E five from white, strategically, you know, you've got a good grip on D four. It should be a comfortable game uh, for black. But nevertheless, 
I've pursued it here. After knight g7, I tucked away the bishop in preparation of d5. And okay, he's got a solid classical position, good control of d4. If ever e5, fantastic knight here, maybe. So it's a good position for black. No uh, disagreement there. And I played d3, and now there was a long pause. And I wondered what was going on here. Is he a bit worried about h4, maybe, if he just routinely castles? Um, I wasn't sure. This doesn't look that brilliant. Uh, maybe just h5, maybe just... So I, it became a mystery why he was spending a long time here, and the mystery revealed itself now. Um, what he did was seemingly my initial reaction was a little bit controversial. He played bishop takes c3 check. Okay, so I haven't got too many moves here, too many Zwishans, as I, t I take back. But now, after d takes e4, my Zwishans are capacity has gone up here. I, I don't have to recapture. By the way, that's a new theory of mine on the side. And I'm, I'm heading for a video on that, that the longer the time control, the more you should be able to see uh, Zwischen zugs um, in between moves, or you know, not not automatic routine recaptures, because you sh you should be able to see more finesses. So I think I have this theory that uh, if you do get better at long games, you'll see more of them. So anyway, here I did manage to see one. I didn't want to just get the queens off, lose all the tension, and be strategically murdered later, because you can imagine uh, this situation. D takes, takes, takes. He just plays to lock in the bishop, a la Kramnik when Kramnik uh, crushed Short's bishop. So knight a5, c4 maybe, b6, bishop b7. And um, this is going to be dead, isn't it, behind the double pawns. Could be a very unpleasant position. <coughs> I wanted to avoid that sort of thing. Um, and also the tension has gone without the queens. So instead, there's a very, very important position Um by the way, if you if you want to sort of help uh, confirm the theory that um, the longer the games, if if you get better at them, the more solutions are, please let me know any great solutions you've you you've, you've played recently to win games. But here, it's an important one to keep the tension of the position going. We want to keep the queens on. I know it's a bit silly to say, but you know, often if you see in tail games continual queen dancing, because he doesn't want the queens off. So here there is a way of avoiding the queens coming off. Um, so I play knight g5, just sacking a pawn. So I've got the two bishops, and there's potential dark square weaknesses. And that's all, you know, the evaluation just takes over there, that I might have some compensation there. There's, there's no need for calculation that much, I think. It's a little bit of just evaluation. So he takes here, and I consider another sort of so we just like, well, not not routine capture. I I actually seriously consider for a moment just casting, but I didn't see anything here after casting. You know, what am I gaining by this? Uh, another pawn sack. Okay, maybe there'd be pressure on the d five. The thing is, he wouldn't have to take there. I, so I'm gonna have to take on d three eventually, surely. And this bishop's hand then anyway, and um, undoubling the pawn seems attractive. So in fact, I did just play c takes d three after some consideration. Now he plays b6, and I sort of wonder actually about d3 being a bit vulnerable. On the other hand, if he does try and put pressure on d3, he is kind of weakening uh, these two pawns. And um, I work out I've got a defensive resource here available anyway. I, ju I just simply cancel. Uh, and if he did play bishop a6, at minimum, I would have uh, rook f3. So I thought I'd be okay here, um, but uh, let's see, is is that given as one of the engine's best moves, uh, bishop a6, it possibly is, because there might be another tactic like knight d4, bishop a6, whoops, <laughs> oh dear, so let's see, rook f3, is the knight d4, because then this rook, if knight d4, no that doesn't work, Bishop e3 protects the rook. But here apparently just castles and blacks a little bit better. So I don't know, maybe bishop a6 was worth playing. So 
so anyway, he he didn't do that. He just um, castled. And I played rook f3 anyway in advance of any bishop a6, but also with the idea of rook h3, h5, and I would just snap that off, bring my queen in uh, for the kill. So that's a bit of a crude plan. Um, and it's more attacking than my usual like hearts games last year. I had quite a number of draws last year. Only one loss though, so it was an overall good performance because I had two or three wins. But um, so this this is um, quite attacking this gambit. But usually in the Hearts League, even with a, a German adjudication, out of kind of gambits, I've done better. You know, I've won more games out of gambits than I've lost anyway. So uh, I like having, I think, the attacking initiative. So. He plays another seemingly weakening pawn move, h6, but um, after knight e4, king g7, it's not that clear that uh, I've got a major attack going on. Because at the moment, this bishop is hemmed in by its own pawn. It's got an iron grip on f5. Um, and I think here after queen e1, simply f5, if he can get away with it, would have been good. Uh, let's, let's just check this position. I think it does favour black. F5 is given as the best move. There's a slight issue that we looked at this E6 pawn though. So he's going to have to do something about E6. So maybe Queen D6. Okay that protects E6. And if here maybe Rook F6 or Knight D5. Okay. So I can't use the frontal attack. So I would be slightly worse here it seems technically. From then engine point of view but only fractionally minus 0 0.27 so queen d2 rookie one okay black black is better so something maybe is suspect about my play maybe he was kind of justified after all with perfect play to have played what he did uh, but now I think he does start to go wrong he starts to give himself one too many weaknesses he plays f6 and the the thing is, I'm relieved that I've still got this potential for f5. If I can get f5 in, it hasn't been ruled out yet to liberate this bishop on, on say, h6 and generally that diagonal. So in, in that view, um, I don't want like to allow knight takes f5. So I do something quite radical here. I play g4. I know it's it looks weakening. And um, but he reacted, I think, badly to it. I think he should play f5 here. I think that'll be a good response to keep the bishop in prison. This bishop on c1, f5, just just keeps the bishop in prison and black actually better. So, yeah, I've played this a bit dodgy, but I thought here there might be a possibility of knight h5 in this position, in this sort of position, if he's not careful. And anyway, I thought maybe you know maybe there's some dynamism later with with the G file. In any case, uh, you know if, if we get this sort of plan, um, so possibly th there's a tiny bit of dynamism to watch out for there. Um, but anyway, it seems uh, you know F5, but no, he plays uh, um, a, a dubious move here. I think this is the blunder of the game. He plays E5. And actually, I don't react perfectly to this because I'm, I'm concerned um, clearly about uh, Bishop G4, and I wanted to sort of block his bishop, knowing that I've extended my bishop now. So the move I played was F5, but technically uh, there's a better move available, and I don't want to spoil uh, the idea in the game by showing why exactly. So for the moment, let's just go with the game continuation, and I'll try and return back to this position. Uh, just on general principles, I thought f5 was very interesting, um, keeping kind of you know black's pieces where they are, not trying to allow a knight to e5 because this didn't look that appetizing. F takes this position. Uh, knight takes e5 where d3 g4 it didn't look appetizing but we'll return to that in a moment I played here f5 expecting actually g5 
just just at least neutralize the bishop but then I thought h1 I've still got a nice position and this bishop striking across there is is ideal so I'll, I'll be slightly better here and this has been confirmed when I checked earlier with engine analysis that this position is is good for white now even though I'm pawn down but let's just check on 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 here again uh, if he had played g5 it's it's a slight advantage about half a pawn not such a big deal so this is probably what black should have played but instead in this position he plays g takes f5 and I wonder if I give you 20 seconds what would you play here as white uh, starting from now okay well I've liberated this bishop that's the clue hope you've spotted it bishop takes h6 check it just tears black's king up um, now he played king h7 but if king takes it's unpleasant now check say queen here which hits f6 as well as threatening mate so which means rook h8 is ruled out because of mate so it's actually uh, a lost position here really um, so what he did king h7 is not much better he loses the exchange I take the exchange threatening if he does anything else I'm, I'm actually going to mate him with um, with a queen move uh, for the check so say takes check and the king can't go there because of that diagonal so here that we mate. So basically, he can't take the knight, so he takes back the bishop. And here, instead of the queen check, that might allow um, queen h6. And okay, this might be great as well because the knight takes f6. But there's even better here just to use the rook in this position, which is what I did. I used the rook to draw the king out. So after king g6, I just play queen h4 now. And it's dire again. For black because I'm threatening uh, a mate in two with check and mate so say takes check mate so he resigned here there's no real defense in this position so it's a bit of a short game um, delete the rest of those moves uh, but let's go back to just just briefly if um, the, in this position I did play a major inaccuracy as pointed out by one of his teammates I didn't really calculate this too much just visually it wasn't appealing and I rejected it and that's that's a really bad weakness in my game then because what what I'm trying to do at the moment uh, to improve my game conceptually is is try and get that balance right between um, a strategic crush making the position easier to play I'm playing the position that's my uh, conceptual project at the moment and this is a classic example actually where it seems initially that f takes e5 makes the position a bit easier for black to play uh, after knight takes e5 but um, it's it's forcing his reaction here this f takes e5 um, and clearly he doesn't want to play this because this just gets even worse here bishop takes h6 it's absolutely crushing uh, surely let's just engine check this position f takes e5 but as I say there, there was an initial impression that I made it easier to play for black if f takes e5 takes and it's just as bad as before with queen h4 okay because if if rook h8, I think queen queen f6 is is going to be mating. In fact, that's mate immediately. Remember that bishop's on there. So so that clearly he can't play f takes e. And if he plays knight takes e5, and this is why I ruled it out because intuitively I didn't want to have this horrible knight on e5, seemingly horrible. But again, actually, in in the specifics of the position here, uh, bishop takes h6 
is is great just just as in the game it's again great now you might think there's tricks with the king and queen here like knight f3 but they're not helping uh, again rook h8 you know queen f6 mate so um, basically in this position of the rook h3 uh, you know it's it's again diabolical for black so I'd give him a chance here this knight f3 is not helping it's I just take and I'm plus four here. It's it's crushing. It's basically um, what what is it basically? Uh, well, black is um, threatened with with rook h3. Um, so say knight d5, rook h3, rook h8. This will actually lose the knight. Then queen takes. Sorry, rook h3, threatening mate. If that forces rook h8, then take, and then take on d5. So if we go back, um, basically, so f takes e. So I give up a piece. So we're about. And he gives back the piece with knight f3 check. So this is the scenario. But it seems in this position, black is okay. E even though equal on pieces here, black's helpless against rook h3. If g5, you might ask. Okay, so let's follow this. Knight takes g5. Queen takes. Oh, there's a real crusher here. Rook f7. That's a bone crusher for that queen being unprotected. No, I didn't see this, but um. And maybe this is some justification that, you know, if if these variations cannot be seen uh, by human eye, that the intuition of not playing f takes e is is quite interesting because intuitively, um, I didn't like the look of a big knight on e5, and in that variation, it's very handy uh, for gaining a bit of time, as that variation just demonstrated for knight f3 check so intuitively I've I've simplified the position again by playing f5 the huge downside so it's an easier to play position because I've kept the knight out of the game the huge downside it's also kind of easier for black to defend technically or is it with g5 although you could argue that I'm going to just blast black anyway because positionally I've done in the bishop as well and and I've got this beautiful bishop here, so I just play h4 and carry on. And this is better than the usual position I would have, because this bishop's outside the pawn chain, very useful on that diagonal. So that's probably going to be a win anyway, uh, without too much calculation effort, because something's going to collapse there. I'm going to sack on g5. So th this is a fairly critical position. And I'd like to ask you this balance of making the position easier to play or playing to the finesse of the position. In the light of the evidence, what move would you have preferred to play here? I'll be interested in your comments about this position on move 16. Sorry, 17. So I had played f5. Would you have chosen f5 or would you have played f takes e? Now, if you had played f takes e also could could you add would you have seen this variation uh with that we we've seen here um so f takes knight takes you would need to see the bishop's sack and black giving up the piece again with knight f3 um not here queen f6 so we're going to overwrite that we're going to make that in the main line Knight f3 check. So you would need to see knight f3 check as well. And then you'd need to see also this idea of g5, potentially, because otherwise knight g6 and black might be you know wriggling out. So without knight takes g5, does white actually retain any advantage? If the if the queen goes back, okay, there's, there is apparently an advantage. 
but it's not that clear, is it? So here's here's a bit of controversy. This, uh, given our limitations as humans, do we play f takes e or do we play f five? Given our human limitations for calculation, anyway, I just thought f five intuitively, and that you know the teammate that was excited about f e was saying I don't calculate, but really I I was just trying to evaluate. You know, I was just happy that this bishop had scope. This bishop was reduced in scope, and the knight was kept out of e five, which traditional traditionally yeah, I've lost lots of games with a big knight on e5 I'm sure many of us have uh, you don't want the, the opponent's knights you know strongly central so that's an, that's an interesting clash of strategic crush versus play the position where strategic crush equates to making the position easier to play uh, so f5 is the easy choice and it just so happens the game was massively simplified after g takes al allowing the bishop takes h6 which is really destructive but anyway, let's uh, let's have a look in overview and summary as well. I've been seeing your comment on move seventeen though. So yeah, this system, I should probably get used to playing bishop b five. To be honest, there's probably more venom in bishop b five uh, this than this a three system. So I guess I need to have the guts to look at a few stem games maybe, and maybe we could video annotate some games of Goblin Jones in this position with bishop b five. I think I've seen games of Sunscale in the past with Bishop B5, but there's there's a, a lot of stuff going on about it, I think, to disrupt black. So Bishop C4, this system is more passive, clearly. And this turned out to be potentially a very, very good idea using forcing moves to get a you know guaranteed good position if, if it's followed up correctly. It's not all bad. I'm a pawn down here, after all. <clears throat> It just so happens that you know maybe he should have played bishop a6, but he intuitively he didn't want his bishop away for, from adding solidity you know to, to these guys these pawns. Um, so he was trying to seal things up, uh, and I was trying to sort of open things up now with g4, even though I'm weakening my king slightly because I want to get this bishop liberated. And so here, I mean, this is what I've been aiming for anyway, just to get the bishop liberated. You know, I just didn't want the opponent's pieces that aggressive, and it turns out, you know, that aggression does lead up to some concrete tactical, you know, examples of using the knight on e5, which need to be factored in to the calculation. So anyway, g takes. So I take, and and it's it's easy to play now. Um, just line up my my rook and queen decisively, because the queen also happens to be on on f6. Okay, I uh, hope you got something out of it. And that, that interesting question that moves 17, I'd like to see honest answers, please. Would you have played f takes e, which is technically best, but requires a lot of calculation potentially, or would you have played f5? Thanks very much.